go. If they let it go with no action, it just is taken out of the surplus that we have, the, the, the a rainy day fund. That because legally, constitutionally, we have to have a yeah. balanced budget. If we don't balance it, then they will just take whatever is in the rainy day fund. I think that that's not a responsible action. The longer you wait and you allow structurally high costs to stay in place, mm -hmm. um, the higher your deficit will be. And those deficits are now predicted to be staggering. We're looking at between six and eight billion dollars in the next two to three years. And that can't be done by just tinkering around the edges. We have to look at the cost of government. Look at how many people does the state serve? How quickly has that population grown or shrunk? And what's the cost of inflation and have our structural costs. And by the way, structural costs at the state is very similar to the structural costs in our towns and municipalities. Their biggest ticket items, of course, is the salary, wages, and benefits that are being paid to those individuals working in state government. And I, that has grown. In fact, unfortunately, the state of Connecticut, the largest employer is the state of Connecticut, 70,000 individuals. So I've, I've heard from a lot of cities and towns in our area, and they're very concerned about their high costs as well. But I pointed out to them that they have working really hard to keep those costs under control. I think they need to look at the state government, which um, has grown much higher than their budgets have grown and faster. And that's a place that should be looked at first. And I know the governor is looking into that. We're, we're going to have some meetings even this week um, to talk about some of those issues. And I'm hoping that we can all come together. The one thing, now everyone says everything is on the table. The one thing that is not mm -hmm. on the table for me, it is not on the table, that is a tax increase because our high taxes have driven people out, have reduced our revenues. And in fact, it's shown every time if you make a cost structure less, you will attract more businesses, you will attract more people, mm -hmm. and that, that revenue will go up. We're, we're losing population. It's a very dangerous direction. But again, on a more positive note, we have seen some um, a recent uh, positive things happening in our district, and one of those areas is uh, transportation. Mm -hmm. And you can't represent this region, and Judy Friedman will tell you the same thing, unless you have your eye on our transportation infrastructure mm -hmm. for our region. It's yeah. incredibly important. Fortunately, down our way, uh, we do have a lot of projects we have we ready to go. We do. We absolutely and do. I, in fact, um, I had uh, been reading uh, the national platforms on uh various big issues, whether it's health care or transportation. I particularly uh, was interested in the new administration's platform on, on transportation, which I think is a really good one. It's time for a very bold move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I think the public supports that because when you do a transportation project, uh, the money is going to something that is tangible, they can see, and they're using. Mm -hmm. And we have an old, outdated infrastructure. And in uh, New England, particularly, and Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York, particularly, mm -hmm. we have um, certainly roads, uh, but and bridges, and that need to be upgraded. Bridges, in particular, tunnels. Uh, we have, um, uh, but most importantly, is our mass transit area, an area that has been left to languish over a long period of time. And I go back with this issue from my very first day in office. I was. Uh, shocked to learn that uh, the then governor was going to shut down our entire Norwalk to Danbury train line permanently, not just temporarily, but permanently replace it with buses. And it was an extraordinarily bad idea, and I had to fight that tooth and nail. That was one of those battles, the first battles that I that I won, uh, and won quickly. But from that moment, I, it was obvious to me that that nobody got it, and nobody in uh, state government, especially in Hartford area, had any understanding or, or any real um, affinity for it's mass It's better transit. now because isn't, it's isn't very it? much better. Oh my gosh. It, but as I said, over that period of time, things started to change. And more and more, there started to have a, a, an appreciation and understanding for it. And now uh, there are many from other parts of the state, uh, other representatives that want trains where they don't have them there in their area. And by the way, a lot of our train tracks were covered over and uh, went into to disuse. And now there are many proposals that want to uh, uncover those tracks, start to use them. There are some excellent proposals. Of course, I'm concerned about our area right here. And I had been working over a period of those years to uh, try to focus more attention. One of the areas that's very important is on that line, uh, old outmoded uh, signal 
uh, systems that they currently have or don't have, Mm -hmm. quite honestly. They don't have on the Danbury line a signal system that allows trains to pass each other unless an individual gets out and physically pulls a lever. And, you know, that's 1800 technology. So um, fortunately, over the years, I had put in some proposals to add some funding for that. And uh, just this year, uh, they have, uh, they are now moving quickly forward on that, have just in this last bonding meeting uh, put the $2 million necessary to complete the design on this. And I've been uh, told by our Department of Transportation and our new, by the way, our new commission was excellent, uh, that they will start the project in 2009 and complete it by 2011. All right. This is terrific. It was a huge win. What that will do is allow us to add capacity and have more frequent and better timetable on that as well. And there's a host of other proposals to improve that line over a period of 10 years that could dramatically make it better. That's just one example of what should be happening all over the state. And I know people are scrambling right now to put those on paper so that Connecticut could present a list of their infrastructure projects that could get federal funding. That's what we need. We need that infusion of of, of financial support as well as a can-do attitude about our Department of Transportation transportation, and I hope to be more fully engaged in that process with them. Uh, we, We do have some very serious needs in Connecticut. The federal government gets a lot of our taxes, just as the state of Connecticut gets a lot of Fairfield County uh, uh, revenues uh, to support their whole state budget. So hopefully a lot of that uh, funding uh, will come to our lower part, lower part of our state, where uh, really the jobs are and the revenues are, more importantly. So if you had a list of things that you think are important or want to do, uh, whether it's 10 or 3 or however many, uh, what do you think, uh, let's say, the legislature should be doing first? Well, first, they should be taking a good look at their tax structure. And secondarily, they need to be looking at how much they spend to run state government. And it should be aligned more in line with the, the number of people that they serve. Uh, they can no longer be the, the largest uh, employer and the most expensive employer in the state. We need to consider the public first, who they're there to serve. Uh, number three, educational excellence is still at the top of our list. We should not lose that position. I'm afraid of of its stature being eroded. So we can have excellence and education without spending a whole lot more. Um, it, it is about what we consider our priorities in that field. And number three, of course, our transportation infrastructure area is exceedingly important, and I'm going to be fighting for that for our region. I think that um, being close to the to the communities in which I represent, there's a great deal of concern about uh, individual families, and they're con- very concerned about their own uh, finances, whether their job security. They're very concerned about the uh, erosion in their retirement accounts, in their college trust fund accounts for their kids. So there's there's a lot of um, uh, fear, unfortunately, and I think that the state should be very, very cognizant of that and sensitive to that. I've been reading an, a wonderful book on my rides up and down to Hartford. It's a Booker T. Washington's Up from Slavery. It's an amazing uh, story uh, about uh, a hope for a new generation that had just gotten their freedom. And his main tenets were that the best hope for our people was education, industriousness, working hard, and self-reliance. And that's just as true it is today than it was back in 1901. And that is my hope that we rediscover that and work hard at that. But I also am hoping uh, for 2009 that we are charitable to everyone, Mm -hmm. that our children have good role models, Mm -hmm. and that we have self-respect for for all. You know what? I think in this time, as you say, of, of difficulty and challenge, I think this is an opportunity, and I'm really delighted to have you as state senator now. And thanks for coming. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Margaret. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for watching.